As a finance professional working in industry, one of the most annoying tasks was having to write the period end or the forecast commentary. We'd done the analysis, we knew the reasons for all the variances, and now we had to change that into some sentences for the audience to read. The problem is, is that it always took longer than it should, and it always contained more errors than it should. Well, today I want to share with you a Lambda function that you can use to automatically write this commentary for you. Because it's a Lambda function, it means you do need Excel 365. But I will give you all the code. I won't go through it line by line, but you can have all the code and you can see how to use it and how to edit it to work in your scenario. So if you're ready, let's get started. To work along with the examples in this video and to get hold of the code, please download the example workbook and you can find links in the descriptions box below. So let's start by working through a simple example. Now my workbook already has this function loaded, so it won't work for you until you've loaded this function. The function is called auto commentary, I press tab and then open bracket. The first argument is the heading. This is the title of the thing that's being analyzed. In my scenario, it's income. The second argument is the comparative name. Well here I've got my actual numbers and my budget numbers, so I'm comparing actual to budget, so my comparative is the budget. The next argument is the subheadings. This is the classification that we have for each of our items. I'm going to select cells A5 to A8. The following argument is the base values, which are my actual values, and then the comparative values. The next argument is the reasons. So this is additional description that we can give to our commentary. I have that here. Now, so far, each of these arguments have been reasonably straightforward. Now they start to get a bit more complicated because it's about how we display numbers and think about sentence structure. So the next argument is the sort order. What order do I want to sort my variances in? For this argument, we can enter one of four values. If we enter one, we get our variances in ascending order or minus one for descending order. If we enter a two, it shows the variances in ascending order but it shows them by absolute value. So you'd have the smallest impact up to the biggest impact. And if we enter minus two, it shows that in descending order. I'm going to enter minus two. That means my variances will be in descending order, but we'll start with the largest variances down to the smallest. The next argument is plus word. This is the word that we'll use for a positive variance. I'm going to use the words higher than. After that, we have the minus word. So how do we describe a negative variance? Lower than. The next argument is the statement number format. This states how do we want to format our numbers? And we can use the standard type of code that we might enter into a custom number format. So here in double quotes, put the pound sign, and I want hash, comma, hash, hash, naught, semicolon, close bracket. So that means that a positive number will show with a thousand separator and will always show at least zero. Now the negative numbers will show the pound symbol again and then hash comma hash hash naught and then we'll close that bracket and close the double quotes. So that means positive numbers will show without brackets and negative numbers will show inside brackets. So that's the statement number format. The next argument is the variance number format. So how do we want to format the numbers inside our variance commentary? So for this I want to show positive variances with a plus symbol in front. And then I'll enter hash, comma, hash, hash, naught again. Then for negative variances, I'm happy to show those in brackets. So bracket, found symbol, hash, comma, hash, hash, naught. Close that bracket and then close that double quote. The next argument is the threshold argument. This is the number below which we don't really care about those variances because they're too small to worry about. In this instance, I'm just gonna type 200. So anything below 200 pounds, we don't care about. The final argument is the decimal accuracy. This determines the rounding accuracy applied to each number. And we can use negative numbers in here. So if we want to round in tens, hundreds or thousands, we can enter minus numbers. So minus six, for example, rounds to the nearest million. For this example, our numbers are quite small. So I'll just enter a zero, I'll close that bracket, and then let's press return. And it's generated the commentary in here. It says income of 8,210 is plus 1,610 higher than budget. This is driven by consultancy variance of plus 1,500 due to new customer, digital product variance 
of plus 200. The remaining variance of minus 90 relates to items below 200. So now if our numbers change, so let's say our actual is actually 290, 1000, 5000 and 800. You can now see that this updates automatically with new commentary. I'm not saying that this is perfect, but it gives us a lot of flexibility and hopefully you can adapt this to your own specific scenario. Okay, so we've seen how it works. Now let's look at a few more examples in action. Start here with example one. So which arguments have we applied here? Well, we've got the same ranges at the start. We've used higher than and lower than as our plus and minus words. We've then used millions to display our numbers. Naught, point, naught, naught, then two commas to show that they should be displayed in millions, and then a slash M to include the letter M after that number. We've included that for our statement number format and also our variance number format. We've then said that we don't care about any variances less than 100,000 and our numbers are rounded to 100,000. So minus five means it's rounded to the closest 100,000. So when we look at that, you can see that stock of 39.4 million is 2 million lower than budget. So it's driven by raw material variance of 3.3 million due to shortage of XBS 102 and talks about the work in progress variance of 0.9 and then finally the finished goods variance of 0.4. So even though our original numbers were in whole numbers, this commentary has now written it in one decimal place millions. Okay, let's take a look at example two. So here we're still using the words higher than and lower than. This time we're showing our number in thousands. So we've got naught and then a comma that will put our number into thousands. And then we're displaying a K after that number so that readers know that the numbers are in thousands. So our statement number, so the number at the start where it says stock of, and then that number there, we're showing the number with a dollar symbol at the front, or if it's a minus number, we're showing it in brackets. Then each of the variance description numbers, we're showing those with a plus number at the start or in brackets, and they are also shown as thousands. We've set our threshold as 2000, so we're not gonna have any variances which are less than 2000 and we've set our decimal accuracy to minus three. So those numbers are also rounded in thousands. We don't have any reasons in this example, but now our commentary says EBIT of $7,000 is $5,000 lower than the three plus nine forecast. This is driven by sales variance of 3000 and overheads variance of 2000. All of our other variances, such as cost of sales, salaries, and depreciation, are all less than 2,000, which means that we've not provided any additional analysis about those items. Okay, let's take a look at example number three. So here we've got whole numbers already, but yet our commentary is displaying in thousands. So for that, our number formats are just shown as a zero, and then a slash, and then a K, so that means we're not rounding those numbers when we display them. We also said that we're not concerned about anything where the variance is less than 10. And we've applied zero as a decimal accuracy in this scenario. We've also changed it so that it says favorable to and adverse to. And we've set our sort order to minus one. That means the variances are in descending order. And there you can see the commentary that has been written by the auto commentary function. Finally, example four. We've got quite a short commentary here. Debtors of 1.9 million are in line with budget. Well, that's because we've said that we're not interested in anything that is less than 100,000. We've also rounded our numbers to 100,000. Therefore, if we look at our totals, 1877249 rounds to 1.9 million. The budget, 1892767 rounds to 1.9 million. Therefore, the total of the actual is 1.9 million and the total of the budget is 1.9 million. None of our variances are individually over that threshold. Therefore, there's no variances to describe, which means our commentary is just that debtors of 1.9 million are in line with budget. So if you'd like to get hold of this function and use it or adapt it to your scenario, then the easiest way is to get hold of the example file. There's a link in the descriptions box below that'll take you to the blog post 
From there, you can download the example file. Once you've opened that up, you can simply click on one of the example formulas, press Control C to copy, come across into a brand new Excel workbook, and then press Control V. That has now entered that formula into your workbook. So even if I clear out this cell, if I type equals auto, you can see auto commentary appears, and therefore that has now been copied into this workbook. Now, if you want to know where that's saved, you can come to formulas and then the name manager, and you can see the auto commentary is there inside the name manager. And in the box at the bottom, it contains all the code for that function. If you want to edit this function in any way, then I suggest you get the advanced formula environment. If you go to insert and then select get add-ins, from there, you'll be able to search for advanced formula environment. And this is the add-in that you want. This is an add-in created by Microsoft. And you click add, and then we'll add that into Excel as an add-in. Then in formulas, once you get that, you'll have the advanced formula environment. Come across to names, and you'll see that auto commentary in there. If I click on the edit icon, you can see all of the code that drives this entire function. So you're free to change this code, you can add to it, you can remove from it, you can do whatever you like to make it fit with your scenario. Then once you've made your changes, just click the save icon and that will save those changes back to the name manager. Well, that's it. That's the auto commentary writing function. It goes to show the power that we now have with these new functions, such as Lambda and Let and Dynamic Arrays. If you want to understand how these functions work, then really invest the time in understanding these new features. Hopefully you can put it to good use and it can save you a lot of time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.